sessions. So here we have the five minute seminar plan to help those working in higher education reduce their lesson planning anxiety uh, and increase their impact. So I want to just script through an example um, that you can use in your own setting and I want to try and do this in the next five to ten minutes. So I'm going to be very quick. Um, so from top left, working clockwise around the plan. Um, you know, obviously in a seminar, you know your students, you see them often. So I would probably advocate in here, it's just a simple way of looking back over where the students were before, um, who was absent, what happened in the lesson. Um, think about how you can engage your students with the three questions um, in grey. What do you know about your students? Where do you want them to get to? How will you know when they are there? Now, I appreciate you're working in a highly academic environment uh, with a huge um, workload in terms of reading material uh, and academic language. But um, with all those triangulated, those two boxes plus the context of who you're working with, that brings you to the big picture. Now, in terms of the seminar itself, uh, the questions I would ask you in terms of your thought process is what is it that you are trying um, to achieve? Why? How are you going to do this? And then just consider what if. So, for example, if you have to move rooms um, or the IT support doesn't work or you don't have enough materials or hardly any students or too many students, whatever it be, just all different um considerations to, to allow you to uh, be best prepared as possible. So that is a starting point which is a thought process not necessarily filling in the form. Now I wouldn't say that you need to scribe anything in these three boxes at all but it's a good starting point to think about the conditions that have gone before leading to you to the point of the seminar itself. So when you will look at research, uh, when teachers are clear and precise, it has a higher impact on student outcomes. So thinking of that as a starting point, how can you be clear and precise? Uh, how can you use command words, uh, connectives uh, to help students meet the success criteria? So I've given you an example here. Um, now, I uh, don't work in health. Uh, I'm a teacher. My background is design technology. Um, so looking at, for example, trying to mix those two from my experience to you, you for you to use as an example, um, I would write here uh, for myself and share this with the students to understand why and how anthropometrics or the data itself could be used to improve the design of prosthetic limbs. So I've tried to uh, amalgamate design and health here um, as an objective. So that's what I want my students to be clear about that what, this is what we're learning and why. Now the why is your, your target, uh, the learning outcome. So how would I track this throughout the, the session um, or the next seminar? Um, so I would consider the what, why, how. So I want students to take away from my seminar what is anthropometrics, whether it's the etymology of the word, uh, given some examples in uh, all areas of design or health, uh, or in particular this example, prosthetic limbs and how it might vary from standard, you know, percentile groups. So, you know, the, the bog standard uh, limb that would fit most people of a, an adult age for certain joints or unique situations where, for example, I might lose the bottom uh, area of my arm uh, without getting too many specifics, but you get the idea of, of what we're trying to achieve. In this area here, now this is working on a 60 minute model, assuming, um, you know, I'm not advocating you have five transitions, but give or take students arriving, settling down five or 10 minutes. So kind of minute seven to 10 kicking off and then with time for questions and answers and transition to a, the next seminar. Um, that's how I've divided up the session here. So things that I would put in as prompts for yourself. So if we look at row one, first of all, what are you doing? What are your students doing? So sitting at the front, sitting in groups. Um, what's the key concept? So you'd introduce the objective to understand why and how anthropometric data is used. Then consider a key question you want to ask students at this particular moment. So what do we understand about prosthetics? Or what do you know about anthropometrics? Something simple, get a discussion. 
You've obviously in resources got slides or handouts or maybe even a prosthetic limb. Uh, on to row two, so transition, so students might be moving to another part of the room for a demonstration, so how would you manage that? Five students in the room or 50, um, you, you're going to kind of need to consider that. Um, this stage I might want to test and evaluate various limbs. Key question I would start to ask when could, how might, why will, all sorts of different questions to get discussions. Consider the equipment that would need, be needed, how many, etc, etc. Row three, let's have a recap. What do we know so far? How do we know? Discuss questions, etc. Row four, have a, another group session. Let's measure some limbs of ourselves. Let's brainstorm. Let's, let's start to synthesize what we know. What do we need to find out? Have some discussions, a bit of feedback. Uh, and then, you know, bring students back to the end. I want to check what they know. So I need to plan some key questions. And if I don't ask my students, um, what is anthropometrics? What do you know about prosthetics? How do we spell it? You, you know, from the simplest to the most academic, if I don't get any feedback from my students, I, can't, I cannot guarantee that they have learned anything. So in terms of um, being clear and precise, I need to regularly check what students know. And this can be from mass screen, so mini whiteboards, thumbs up, thumbs down, um, rather than just relying on one person with a hand up to kind of affirm what you think everybody knows. Um, so just some simple processes to reduce your anxiety, increase impact in the classroom. Um, kind of finishing off, so the bottom area, we've got the application of the hook. So, you know, with the amount of things that we have to teach students, uh, much, re much information can be lost. So how can we uh, improve ret retention and retrieval? So in this particular example, I would give um, the group in the room some measuring tape, some prosthetic limbs through the ages, get them to measure, measure ourselves, have a bit of fun, and there's a good chance that I can make learning stick. But again, I wouldn't know that unless I tested it, which is why this area here, your key questions, these questions can be targeted for groups, you know, to try and ask 30 or 50 students in a room is an impossible ask in itself. So key questions for groups of students. Now, you will have some data, you'll be aware of your students that you meet every week, so you'll be able to pitch those because you've got some relationships established and some data or past performance to back that up. But um, in making sure, um, you know, the principle of the original five minute lesson plan was, you know, not what am I teaching, but why? Why is it important that students understand how anthropometrics is important in the design of prosthetic limbs, not just here we're looking at some various objects, let's measure them. Um, and then the final stage, how would I follow that? Follow this up? So next lesson I would check. Now for your students as a follow-up, you obviously have Moodle and your academic platforms that you can use, but you know I, I'm a significant user of Twitter with over 200,000 followers um, at the time of recording this video. But um, a hashtag for this conversation, for example, is hashtag five min plan, which you can see here. So in your own context, if you're producing your own plan or template, you might want to create the hashtag itself like you've got there or use that to, to encourage the dialogue. Um, or you might want to just add, for example, five min plan and then add in your own um, name or you might want to add in LSHTM um, just at the end here. So I was just double checking I had the correct um, spelling or, you know, I want to put McGill here or whatever it would be. Um, and then you create a back channel where people can share on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, whatever it would be. That is my alarm to tell me that this is now approaching 10 minutes. Um, that's a good habit of mine. It's something that also makes something memorable. Um, so by hearing that sound itself, if you put that in your classroom, your seminar um, with students, as well as some objects, it allows you to, to be concise, keep your information simple, um, you know, consider materials, students in or out of seats, what's the noise level required, loud discussions, quiet conversations, and what time frame is available through these important sequences of the lesson. And obviously at the end, time to move on to the next place. So I'm going to pause the video. Thanks for watching. Find out more at teachertoolkit.co.uk.